afternoon. Welcome to another session of Midweek Matters. You know, this quarter we've been looking at um, the epistles of John, and this past week uh, the lesson was dealing with what a journey. And it made me stop and think about John. When John wrote these epistles, he, he was in his late ages. Uh, it was written around 90 AD, so he was there at the beginning with Christ. And he's writing these in, in 90 AD, so he had to be in his senior years. And it made me stop and think that, you know, we this journey that we're on, we do go through stages. And how we accept those stages um, means a lot to those that see us, means a lot to ourselves. And then sometimes it's hard to accept the stages that we go through. Today's lesson, it says, imitate what is good. And this is taken out of the third epistle of John. And what's going on in this, we talked about uh, the first church being attacked by false doctrine. Uh, the Gnostics saying that Jesus was a good man, but he wasn't the son of God. Well, we're seeing John writing to one of the early church workers. His name was Gaius. Um, in that first church, there were people. And the sad part about it is you're seeing the church being infiltrated. Uh, Satan knows where to attack. Uh, and this is what's happening. Gaius is trying to take care of, because they didn't have churches that, as we knew, know it. They traveled from, the preachers traveled or ministers traveled from town to town, spreading the good news. Um, what Gaius had done, Gaius basically had given hospitality to these traveling ministers these disciples, as they came in. And Diotrephes, he basically uh, was throwing people out of the church in the name of the church. So John sat down and wrote a letter to encourage. John, we see in his early years, he basically was a doer. And as he went through this journey of life, it went from being a doer to an encourager and to an advisor. And that's where it comes in with the third epistle. Um, key verse says, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. It says John has his pen out again to write to his dear friend Gaius. He wrote to Gaius to bless him for his faithfulness and good works and to encourage him to continue to be a blessing. John did not want Gaius to be overwhelmed or influenced by the evil deeds of a self-centered man named Diotrephes who was throwing people out of the church for welcoming and ministering to brothers who were visiting. John wrote to let Gaius know that he was fully aware of what Diotrephes had been up to and what he intended to rebuke and confront him on. On the other hand, John pointed to another brother, Demetrius, who was faithful and good. The strong message in this letter is one of both encouragement and caution. Imitate good and not evil. Now, that is some practical advice. Ask the question here. It says, whom and what do you imitate? And I thought about that, and as I watch my grandkids and I watch my son grow up, you know, a child will imitate the, uh, people that they come in contact with, um, be it a musician, their favorite singer, their favorite actor. They have a tendency to imitate. And as I was reading John's letter, it made me stop and think that, the way that we live, the actions that we show, the things that we say, we could influence others around us. Webster tells us that to imitate is to copy the way someone looks, acts, or sound. And I also looked up and made a statement earlier about John becoming an encourager. What does it mean to encourage? It says to give courage or hope to, to hope to make feel more confident, to give help, to aid, or promote one. Imitate is not a bad word. It is really quite simple. To imitate good is good. To imitate evil is bad. We are, ha we are not having a discussion about a game here or some comedic impersonation. We are talking about following an example. It is about acting out what you learn from someone else. Be careful you become like the one you imitate. The imitation of someone else can soon become the real you in action. So again, 
Who do you imitate? John writes here in uh, book third John, John verses one through eight, the elder to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth. Tell them how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. You're seeing John's age coming because he's referring to his uh, disciples of him and the first church as his children. It says, Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. It says, a man named Gaius received a personal letter from John. The name Gaius appears several times in the Bible. We're not sure exactly which one this is, but we know that he's a worker in the church. It says, it was not an uncommon name, and the recipient of this letter may have been a man not mentioned elsewhere. John called him one of his children, perhaps indicating that he was writing to someone whom John himself had brought to conversion in Christ. And going back to the word imitate, we see over in Ephesians, Paul is writing to, to the church. He says, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So again, the lessons we've been following, it talks about the, the three themes. It talks about stand firm, it talks about false doctrine, and it talks about love, just as we read just a few minutes ago. It, says, it goes on here, it says, John's paramount wish for his friend becomes his prayer. We need to understand that John was saying, it is foremost in my mind when I think of you that what I wish for you and find myself continually praying for you is for God to bless and provide for you physically and spiritually and for everything in your life to go well. As Christians, the good wish for someone should become a prayer. So he's admonishing us to continue to pray for one another. Second aspect of this blessing that pictures for us true friendship is John's prayer that Gaius would prosper in every way. John said that he was praying that all may go well for Gaius. A true friend is thankful for every blessing God brings into your life. Now, I found this statement that the writer wrote today it is pretty concerning. It says, some people are happy to see their friends get saved, but become jealous if God blesses their friends with prosperity in other areas of their lives. That is not true friendship, nor is it godly friendship. Christians should wish and pray for God's very best for their friends. A desire to see people prosper in God in every way is the beginning and end of true friendship. John goes on to say, he says, John was so excited to hear the good news about Gaius, he, it brought him great joy, and he had no greater joy than to know that Gaius was being faithful to God, that he was continuing to walk in the truth. We've heard that over and over again as part of the lessons that we've been studying is knowing the truth. One of the ways Christians are blessed in, is in seeing their prayers answered. John's prayers for Gaius were being answered. And John was blessed with great joy as he heard reports of how God was working in and through Gaius. It says Christians are blessed when they, when they bless. Hospitality is one way of blessing others. Hospitality is a concept for far beyond just having people over for dinner. It is the posture and spirit of love and caring. All Christians and all churches should be hospitable. 
John said, show hospitality so that we may work together for the truth. Session two says, do not imitate evil. We refer to Diotrephes um, as, as someone who had entered the church. It says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who love to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Now, again, this is happening in the church. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. The writer of today's lesson says, there was a nemesis in the church, Diotrephes. Everything that Gaius was, Diotrephes was not. He was not faithful. He was not kind. In fact, he was trying to put a halt to Christian hospitality. He refused to welcome other believers. And as for people like Gaius, who did, Diotrephes, put them out of the church. Diotrephes was also gossiping, gossiping by spreading malicious nonsense. And John himself was on his list. Diotrephes was a selfish, carnal, nasty man. The welcoming character and heart of God was not in this man. So again, several weeks ago, we talked about you can tell a person by their actions. God, if we love God, God's love lives within us. And here we see a gentleman, an example that is completely opposite of God's love. He was throwing people out of the church for being kind to strangers. He must, he was had been giving Gaius a hard time. It says, ask the question, why do people like Diotrephes always seem to have such influence? And the writer explains, self-seeking people have great influence because they always push their agenda. They are often so vocal that people just give in to get them to quiet down. John had already let Gaius know that he was to continue the good things he was doing. He encouraged Gaius to continue on. Don't be sidetracked. Continue giving the hospitality to those visitors. Continue welcoming people into the church. Love them as God loves them. He was not to allow Diotrephes to discourage him, John basically said, do not listen to him, and whatever you do, do not act like him. Session three goes on and says, imitate what is good. It says, dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil is, has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself, we also speak well of him and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. Writer goes on and says, if you care about someone, you want to give that person the best possible encouragement and advice. You want God's best for those you love. John gave his friend, Gaius, the best possible advice. The best advice ever and always is imitate, replicate, and pursue with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength the goodness of God. To imitate what is good should be the pursuit of every Christian. The Diotrephes was seeing to it that he was the center of attention and get in his way. John did not want Gaius following Diotrephes. Example, so John gave Gaius an example to follow. He wrote about Demetrius. Goes on and says, it really was not about Demetrius or Diotrephes. It was about how they behaved before God and people. A person is known by his or her deeds. Twice John used the phrase, anyone who does what a person does, his or his, her deeds, tells about his or her relationship with God. A person who imitates God must have a relationship with God. I want to read that again. A person who imitates God must have a relationship with God. 
A person who imitates the devil is certainly not a friend of God. John said that those who do evil have not seen God. Going back to what we read just a little while ago in Ephesians, we see again what Paul is saying. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So to be imitators of God, we see two disciples or apostles giving us this advice. Since John's prayers and concerns for Gaius and how he might be influenced by others prompted him to say, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil but what is good. All Christians would do well to follow this advice. Goes on and says, Demetrius, not Diotrephes, is the clear message of John. Like the apostle Paul, John wanted his children in, in the faith to follow someone who followed God. Remember, Demetrius, not Diotrephes. Follow God and not Satan. God alone is true. And John wanted Gaius to continue in, in the truth and do what is right. Over in Philippians, we see another writing from Paul. And in our journey of life, a lot of times we find ourselves being pulled in different directions. Uh, tough times, it's hard to, you know, kind of be observed as walking in the light of God. But Paul tells us, he says, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am, I am in. I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. And he closes, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And that's what John was trying to tell Gaius. Look at the, the positive things. Imitate those that are replicating God's love to others. So as we grow and our journey changes through different stages in our life, we have to learn to be content in everything that we do. And keeping God as the lessons have been teaching us, stand firm, avoid false doctrine, and love one another. Have a great week and hope to see you next week.